My ownership of the Nikon Z9 camera is coming up for one year. And in this video, I'm going to go over seven most critical things to know before using your almost perfect Nikon Z9 camera to ensure that you have the most optimum and seamless transition from other camera systems or previously used DSLR cameras. And while there's a small learning curve, I will help you to get started and future you will be glad that you made these camera adjustments in the past to serve you better in the future. So today it's all about you. Did I say you too many times? My name is Vitaly with Touch Life Studio. We talk about camera gear, portraits and wedding photography, video production, tips and tricks and how to take your photography to the next level. So, and the first one is to how to activate your sensor shield. Just so you know, when you buy this camera, it does not come by default with a sensor shield turned on. And the purpose for that is when using and changing your lenses in places like at the beach or somewhere where it's dusty, your sensor is always protected. So this is how you do it. You scroll down to the wrench menu and you need to go down to the sensor shield behavior at power off. Once you get there, you want to select that menu and choose the sensor shield closes. So now every time you remove your lens, you will see that your sensor is completely closed and protected. Now, the second thing to know is to how to set your raw recordings options. Now, this camera records all image raw options at 14 bit, okay? So now this is how you get to it. Under the photo shooting menu, you, under the photo shooting menu, you scroll down to raw recordings. At this point, there are three options. Once you click on it, there's a lossless compression, there's a high efficiency star, and there is a high efficiency. Now, out of these three options, I would suggest that you choose high efficiency star because it allow you to have nearly identical image quality, but on top of that, you're gonna have a smaller file sizes. Now, I would also suggest that you pick up 128 gigabyte or 256 gigabyte of CF Express cards. And it's preferably to have two for redundancy as it's important just in case for some reason one card may fail and if you're looking for to get a better deal I will put some in the description down below if you're looking to get CF Express cards. Now the third thing to know is how to make sure that you save your images every single time you take a picture and this one you will find under the slot empty release lock. You go under the range menu and you scroll down to find slot empty release lock. Once you find slot, and slot empty release lock, you wanna click on it and you wanna choose the option that says release lock. Now, when you have this option selected, the camera will recognize when you don't have a CF Express card inside of your camera, it will not take a picture and obviously it will not save it. Because if you go with the second option, enable release, you actually will be able to take a picture. However, it could be misleading because the camera actually will have a shutter click, but it's not gonna be saving any images and any files, any data because there is no card inserted. Now let's talk about it. What if you wanna delete pictures and how do you delete them on one card as well as on the other? Well, there's a option for that. What you wanna do is you wanna go under the playback menu. And here you wanna go down to delete pictures from both card slots. And here you wanna select the option for yes, confirmation is required. And I would suggest that you select same picture on one and two. And why would you want to do this? And I'm sharing from my personal experience, when you have images, identical images on both cards and you delete one, but for some reason you forget to delete the other, you're going to be wondering, why do I have this image here and why don't I don't have image over here? So I would suggest for simplicity, you, if you really already don't like the picture and you know that you're going to be deleting it, I would suggest select 
same picture on one and two. This way, when you delete picture on one card, it will delete picture on the other card as well. Now, the next thing that you want to know is how to set your AF on button or also known as a back button properly. Here, you want to go to select your general AF area mode, say under I menu, you want to select it, let's say as a wide area large. The next thing you want to do is you want to go down to the menu and go up to the pencil menu. Here you want to choose F controls. You want to select that and you want to go down to F2 custom controls for shooting. You want to select this. Once you get to this menu, you want to scroll down and select AF on button and select a 3D AF area mode plus AF on section, okay, for 3D tracking. Now, why would you want to do this one? Because this also selects not only your AF area, but it also initiates autofocus when you're using this function. Now, there are certainly many other ways to set the AF on or back button, but I suggest that you start with this function because you will quickly find that using this function, especially for 3D AF area mode, and at the same time AF tracking, the automatically the camera automatically initiates your tracking here, it's really going to be helpful for you moving forward. Now, the next setting is probably one of my more favorite settings, and this is called a starlight view mode. Now, this is how you set it, and this is what it's used for. So here you want to go down to the pencil menu again, and you want to scroll down to D10. Once you select the D10, you can use this on or off function. Now, however, this is probably not the most practical way. There's an easier way how to set this up. And for that section, you actually want to set up your function buttons in order to be able to quickly access it. And this is how you set this up. You go back to the F controls, and you scroll down to the custom sh control for shooting. And you can select any of this function one, function two, function three buttons. However, in my case, I selected a function two button. And at this point, when you are shooting in a low light environments, and maybe when it's completely dark, and by the way, if you want to see how this starlight view function works, I'm going to link one of our videos up here where I demonstrated the autofocus of the Nikon Z9 where I use the starlight view mode for that specific video. And you will see how amazing of an autofocus of this camera is. So I would suggest that you check out that video. Back to the setting. So once you select this function, now now when you're in a shooting mode, you can quickly switch and turn on and turn off by simply clicking on one of these function buttons. I really, really recommend as this is a one of the functions that's not found in any other cameras up to this point. And very last one is that I want to demonstrate is the LCD illumination. And what this is used for, you will find it that from time to time, especially if you are a portrait photographer or maybe you're a videographer and you're shooting in dark environments and you want to be able to have a quick access to any of your shooting menus and any of your buttons, well, you can actually have those buttons be illuminated. And this is how you get to it. You want to go down to the pencil menu and you want to go down to the D12 function. Once you get to the D12 function, you can either choose it on or off. When you have it set to on, every time your camera is turned on, when you're in the dark, it will always be lit, as opposed to you can actually use your on and off switch to further uh, activate your uh, LCD illumination uh, of these buttons. But uh, I would suggest that you choose the D12 function and LCD illumination will be on all the time and it doesn't really drain much battery at all. Again, congratulations to the purchase of your Nikon Z9 camera and welcome to the community. You are one step further into the future. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you found these seven critical things to know before using your almost perfect Nikon Z9 helpful. 
Your support allows me to make more videos like this for viewers like you. Thank you. Please leave your comments below if you personally found some things that are helpful and useful that were not mentioned in this video. Once again, I'm Vitaly. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.